What's going on guys? Welcome to JavaScript under the hood part two. In this video, we're going to talk about execution context. Now, I just want to kind of refresh what we talked about in the last video and what you should know up to this point. So we know that JavaScript runs on a single thread, the thread of execution, and that thread is synchronous at its core. And any functions that are going to be executed are going to be placed on the call stack, which is a data structure that is uh, last in, first out. Okay, so it's important to understand that up to this point. Now we want to go a level deeper into execution context. All right, so let's get into it. All right, guys, so whenever we run our JavaScript code, whether it's in the browser or in Node.js, it creates a special environment that handles the transformation and the execution of that code. And this is called the execution context. It's going to contain the currently running code and everything that aids in its execution. Now, there's a couple types of execution context. We have the global execution context. That's what's created right away when we create when we run our script. And then we also have a function execution context anytime a function is invoked. So to help you visualize this environment, just think of a box with a side for memory, which is going to be where your variables and functions are stored. This is called the variable environment. And then you have your execution, which is, you know, going line by line and executing your code. Now, whenever an execution context is created, there's two phases that happen, and it's really important that you understand how these phases work. So the first is called the creation phase or the memory creation phase. The second is the execution phase. So to visualize this, you can think of it as passing over your code twice. So the first is to create memory. Second is to actually execute. Now, the first thing it does in the creation phase is it creates the global object in the browser. This is called window in Node.js it's just called global. That's why if I go to any script and I go in my console and type in window, it gives me my global object. And this has everything from, you know, inner width and inner height properties to the entire document object. So if you're ever wondering where this comes from, it's generated when the execution context is created. Now, the second thing it does is it creates the this object and it binds to that window object. That's why if I if I'm in the global scope and I type in this, it gives me the same thing, it gives me that global window object. All right. So it does that and then it sets up a memory heap for storing the variables and function references in your script or in your function. Okay. now when it stores these, it does store the entire function. But when it comes to variables, it stores them as and sets them to undefined. Okay, so if we go back to this box here during the creation phase, it will store the entire function. But for single variables, it's going to store them as undefined first. And that's important to know uh, when it comes to hoisting, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. All right. So that's the memory creation phase. Then we have the execution phase where it just goes uh, line by line, executes your code. And then whenever it hits a function, um, whenever we invoke a function, it'll create a new function execution context. So what I want to do now is go over a block of code and show you exactly what's happening through the creation phase and the execution phase. And I use var for a reason. I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit when we get to hoisting. So remember, the creation phase runs first, so it's going to go through all of our entire script and just put everything into memory. So line one, it sees we have a variable called X. It's going to allocate memory for that in the heap, and it's going to store it as undefined because it's a variable. Next, it's going to look at Y. It's going to store that as undefined. Then line three is a function. So remember, functions, they do actually get stored. The entire function will get stored. All right. Next, we go down to line seven. Sum one is going to get allocated, stored as undefined. Same thing with sum two. All right. So that's the entire creation phase. Then we're going to start on the execution. So it's going to go back to line one and it's going to place the value of 100 into the X variable. Then on line two, it's going to place 50 into the Y variable. It's going to skip when it gets to line three. It's going to skip that func that function definition because there's nothing to execute. 
but then when it gets to line seven, it invokes the get some function. Now remember, whenever we invoke a function, it creates a new function execution context. So now we're going to go into that. So you can kind of think of it like this. We have our global execution context, and then inside that is our function execution context. And at this point, the get some function is going to be on the call stack. All right, and we talked about that in the last video. So we're going to start off with the creation phase for the function. It's going to take n1 and n2, which are arguments, but they are variables, so they're going to get stored and set to undefined. And then the sum variable will also get allocated and stored as undefined. Then the execution phase for the function will start. So it's going to assign n1 and n2 to 150 because we passed in x and y, which are 150. Then it's going to do the calculation on line four and it's going to put it into the sum variable and then it's going to return from the function execution context to the global with the value of, of 150 or sum. Okay, so then it will take all that, put it into sum one in memory and then we move to line eight and we do the whole thing over again. All right, so we hit a function, we go ahead and uh, have a new execution context with the creation phase and then the execution phase. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how this all works. But so now what I want to do is jump into the browser and do the same thing. So I have the code here, the exact code we were just looking at, and I'm going to go to sources. And what I'm going to do is place, place a breakpoint at the very beginning of the script. Okay, and over here, we'll see the call stack. We only have one function, so we'll just see that. But we want, what we want to really pay attention to is this scope right here. So what I'm going to do is just reload the page. Now, nothing has executed because I put a breakpoint here, so everything is paused. However, the creation phase has run. And remember, the creation is going to put our variables into memory as undefined, and it's going to store the, the entire function. So now over in scope, you can see we have global. So and that's that's our window object. And if we look for the function of get sum, there it is. It's right here. And the entire thing is stored, the entire function. If we hover over it, we should see that it's um, Yeah, that it's stored as well. But if we look at any of these variables, so undefined X and Y, now they are here. If we go come down, we should see X and Y, yep, right here, but they are undefined. So at this point, the creation phase has run. Now we're going to step through and go through the execution and you'll see the same stuff will happen as we as I showed you in the slides. So if I go, if I run that piece of code, it's going to store 100 in X. So now if I come up here, I wish this wouldn't change, but I've defined it again. So now Y is still undefined because it hasn't executed. It's only gone through creation, but X is set to 100. Okay, now if I click this arrow again, now Y should be set to 50. So let's go up here and find Y. Yep, so now X has 100 and Y has 50. Now if I go ahead and click this arrow again, it's going to run this line right here, which is the get sum function. So now if we look at the call stack, you should see get sum is now on the fall in the fall stack, the call stack. And we're now in that execution context. Okay, so if I come up here, in addition to our global scope, we also have our local scope. And you can see we have N1 and N2 are set to 150, but some is still undefined because it hasn't been executed. If I click this again and we go back up to our local scope, now you can see that sum is assigned 150. So now what I want to do, since we, we now know about the execution context, you understand that there's a creation phase and then an execution phase, variables function gets stored. Now I want to talk about hoisting. So hoisting is often referred to as the process where the interpreter appears to move the declaration of your functions and variables to the top of their scope or to the top of the page prior to the execution of the code. So this is a pretty elementary explanation of hoisting. Now that you understand the global execution context and the creation phase, you can understand how hoisting works. So let me show you exactly what I mean. So in JavaScript, we can take, uh, let's see, let's just, let's get rid of this. And then 
Should get rid of that too. So I can go above my function call right here. And even though I created the get some function below it, I can still call it here. In fact, I'm going to wrap it in a console log because it doesn't actually have any output. So let's say console log get some and then I'm going to just remove this breakpoint for now and go to the console and let's reload. Uh, whoops, we need to pass in. Let's pass in X and Y. Okay, so now we get 150. Now, the reason that this works should be pretty clear. So if, if you don't understand it, just stop and, and think for a second what, what execution context does. It has two phases, has a creation phase, it, where it adds all of your functions in your script to uh, a, an area in memory, in the memory heap, and it also adds variables, but it sets them to undefined. So the entire function is in memory before the script is actually executed, before the execution phase. That's why we can use it. Now, a lot of definitions of hoisting, it makes it sound like the interpreter physically moves the function to the top of the page or to the top of the script, and then you can access it. So I, I don't really like to explain hoisting without explaining uh, execution context and the creation phase because I think that really puts it in perspective into perspective and, and lets you know how it works. So with that said, what do you think happens if I come up here and then I console log X before I actually define it? I get undefined. The reason for that is because it's already stored in memory as undefined because of the creation phase. Now, as a lot of you probably know, when you use var, var is treated different than let and const because let and const are block scoped. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to let and let's see what happens. So I'm trying to log X, which I defined here with let before I actually defined it. And I get an error that says cannot access X before initialization. All right. So to kind of show you why this happens, I'm going to come back to the sources tab and let's just get rid of the console log. And then I'm just going to change this to let as well. And let's go ahead and again, I'm going to put a breakpoint up at the top here and then I'm going to reload and let's see what happens. So we know when we used var, our, our variables were stored as a set in the memory as undefined, but they were put on the global scope. Right. So now you can see that there's another scope here called script and X and Y are set to undefined. If I come down here, there's no X and Y on the global scope. That's why it can't find it. So it's actually put in a, a separate area. Now, there are some articles and even some videos when talking about hoisting. It says only functions and, and variables that use var are hoisted. That's not true. As you can see right here, they are hoisted. They are set to undefined. They're just not accessible. And rightly so. You don't want them in the global scope. That's why they're block scoped. And let and const were introduced into ES 2015 for a reason. We wanted block uh, block scoped variables like just about every other programming language. All right. So as far as how they're stored, they're stored in something called the uh, temporal dead zone, which I know it sounds kind of like a science fiction movie, but I have a uh, diagram here. It's not that great, but it just shows you how var and let are different. I should say let or const. Now var, you know, creation phase we have, it's put into memory as undefined and it's directly accessible. With let or const, it's not. So we have our creation phase and then it's in the temporal dead zone where it's not accessible. And then once it's assigned, we can go ahead and use it. All right, now, even though, I mean, this is just kind of my, my personal advice, but even though you can do stuff like this, you can define your functions down here and you can call them above it. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, there's really, I can't think of any good reason to do it. So I, I would suggest doing it like you would with any other language where you have your declarations for your functions and your variables above where you're going to use them. All right, guys. So hopefully this gave you some insight into the execution context and the two phases, uh, hoisting. So in the next video, we're going to look at how asynchronous JavaScript works under the hood.